Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct news. Sam I beat again, she doing political commentary for the media speaks. Friends, I'll tell you what, we've got some good news peppered into the usual grim realities that we normally cover here. There's a reason I start with unsettled souls, I'm telling you. Uh, and this would be one of them. Washington's blog, and this date of the 21st, experts' invasion of Syria could lead to nuclear war. Um, Turkey previously, it says, shot down a Russian jet. Now Turkey and Saudi Arabia are threatening to invade Syria. How dangerous could this get in a worst-case scenario? It says Robert Perry, the investigative reporter who broke the Iran Contra story for the Associated Depressed and Newsweek, wrote yesterday, a source close to Russian President Vladimir Putin who told me that the Russians have warned Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan that Moscow is prepared to use tactical nuclear weapons if necessary, to save their troops in the face of Turkish-Saudi onslaughts. Since Turkey is a member of NATO, any such conflict could quickly escalate into a full-scale nuclear confrontation. Let me explain why this is a problem. And I'm sorry, I know Obama sucks, but those of you that absolutely worship at the altar of Putin just because you hate Obama are about to be very angry with me, and I don't care, I'm still right. Um, Putin is XCIA. I'm not XCIA, excuse me, XKGB. It's the same thing. It's just their version. It's He's XKGB, okay? It's like the CIA. I got ahead of myself. Um, he is a new world order shell, too. He just wants to be on top of the new world order in much the same way that, say, anybody would want their country to be. I, one of the reasons that I can see myself pulling the lever lever for Trump is because he wants the best for our country. I get that. But NATO has grown around him. Now, the, the goal of NATO ultimately was um, to bring about world peace by bringing in countries of differing views to the talking table. That's not what it ended up being. And now you've got countries like Turkey who have openly funded the terrorists, saying that they have a right to protect themselves from the terrorists. So basically, in Turkey, and this is why you tune in, please hit subscribe. Uh, Turkey has managed to align themselves with evil people who are now turning around and likely bombing them. I hear some people saying it's a false flag, but we have no proof of that yet. Um, you've got the terrorists that Turkey tried to fund blowing up Turkey. Where have we seen this? How about when the Americans, uh, that would be us, how about when the Americans funded the terrorists that were all kind of to help to stabilize the Soviet Union. Now, here's a philosophical question for you. What would have been worse? The expansion of the Soviet Union or what became the expansion of Al-Qaeda? You can argue that America won it, depending on what you consider winning. I'm not saying we did, but you, you get what I'm saying. But that's what we did. We funded terrorists and Al-Qaeda and uh, they came back and bit us in the ass. That is what Turkey seems to have done by funding a lot of the people who have become ISIS. Now, when the Soviet Union became, once again, Russia, one of the prerequisites were that NATO was not to grow to become a threat to Russia. And while I detest Putin, I am fair. This has happened. This has been a major problem for Russia. Um, but the answer is it nuclear weaponry. For one thing, the fallout from these things, even much smaller 
scale than a full blown, you know, global nuclear war like War Games or something. Even smaller can it be astronomical to, to the health and to the country as a whole. It will be unlivable. And if you do live there, then you you end up uh, you end up um, living like the poor people do in Belarus for crying out loud. I tapped in uh, tactical nuclear weapons fallout, as you can see here on Fat Cam, and uh, there you can see all of the warnings for it over and over and over again. You have Fallout Four that's going to come up too. I should have seen that coming. Um, it's a problem, friend, and Putin. Putin is likely responsible for the poisoning of, uh, ironically enough, by polonium, which is nuclear. A lot of Edgar, when he was poisoned, and believe it or not, ironically enough, like I said, it was it was nuclear. It was plutonium. Um, Putin is not a good person. Let's pretend that I had said Obama was talking about nuking Turkey or nuking Syria. The whole world would be up in arms. And yet Vladimir Putin can say it. And he somehow gets this great pass. I'm sorry. He's talking about throwing nukes around the Middle East. I think it's time for someone to become more than casually concerned here. Washington's blog, it says, asked one of Americans' top experts on Russia, Stephen Cohen, professor emeritus of Russian studies and politics at New York University in Princeton Uni, and the author of a number of books on Russia and the Soviet Union, what he thought of Perry's claim. And Cohen said, Perry is a serious man, and of course, serious is the highest compliment that an insider can give to someone. I cannot say that it will lead to a nuke war, but it's very dangerous, and it is quadrupling U.S. slash NATO forces near Russia's border. Pavel Falengauer, a leading Russian military analyst, also believes that a nuclear war is very unlikely to arise from Russia's skirmishes with Turkey and Syria. Um, so that's good news. But the trouble here is that things tend to go on a uh, rather slippery slope. As they wrote here, this is from expert Bruce Blair. Turkey's downing of the Russian warplane at the Syrian-Turkish border, we covered that, fits a pattern of brinkmanship and inadvertence that is raising tensions and distress between Russia and NATO. Well, again, it's hard to believe Vladimir Putin, knowing what a dishonest person he is, when he says that his planes did not fly into NATO territory. But it's also very hard to believe Turkey is being honest when they say that Russia did, because you have to remember that it's Turkey that was feeding oil to ISIS in order to get money, and that led to the death of thousands of innocent people. So, I mean, neither side here is exactly on the correct view, if you will. But I think it's interesting to point out that we need to stop this Putin worship. And America needs to get serious on what to do um, in terms of trying to come to a more Reagan-like um, talk down here. Because if cooler heads don't prevail, if the ghost of Reagan isn't resurrected here, we're in trouble. And I hate to be the one to tell you that while I don't think Trump is a Reagan, I can promise you Hillary is not. If you don't like that, then vote for McAfee or Johnson. They're both run, running for the Libertarian ticket. And uh, again, it, it's interesting. Rob McAfee was uh, today talking about the um, importance of not giving the government a back door because then nobody will have any security at all. And it's one of the issues that he's right on and Trump isn't. So you've got quite a run going on here in the uh, libertarian ticket if you don't like Hillary or Trump. But that looks like the direction it's going in, largely because uh, Bernie Sanders has been cheated due to the superdelegate system. Um, Sky.com, uh, extraordinary cancer breakthrough revealed. We need some good news. I just told you the freaking uh, Russia might be spitting nukes out like Tic Tacs over in the Middle East. We need some good news. Terminally ill patients are left symptom-free after treatment with modified cells described as potential paradigm shift. This is one of the things that everybody, I, I do believe, that was saying uh, with um, stem cells. Oh, you can't do stem cell research. Look what this has led to. This is remarkable news. We got some good news. 
the correct news has some good views, if you will. Tests of a potentially revolutionary cancer therapy have had extraordinary results on terminally ill patients, scientists have revealed. One more study, more than 9 out of 10 participants with a severe form of leukemia, that would be blood cancer, saw their symptoms completely vanish. Severe is not good. Four out of five patients with some other blood cancers responded positively to the treatment, and more than a half ended up symptom-free. Now, before you go zoning out and decide that the only thing you care about is whether the Arabs have killed the Jews and the Russians have killed the Americans, why don't you go ahead and remember the loved one, be it your friend or family member you have that is no longer with you, I am many most um listen to this news this is major good news symptom free by the way lead scientist professor stanley riddell from the fred hutchinson cancer research center in seattle said the results were among patients who were subjected or projected excuse me to have two to five months to live in other words, they were told it was all over. You will be dead in six months, gone, in the ground, buried, and cold within six months. He said, this is extraordinary. This is unprecedented in medicine, to be honest, to get response rates in this range in these very advanced patients. Wonderful news here. I'll play a little bit of the video. Look at this person that lived. Look, look how sick they are. Look at this. Look what I'm reporting to you. The technique involves removing immune cells called T cells and blocks on cell. Reduce downtime by fifty. Into the latest high performance cell systems with Intel Core processor family. Now, 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 now. The technique involves removing Julie's still in hospital. She's just had a double mastectomy. She got breast cancer while pregnant with her first son. She thought she'd recovered only to learn during her second pregnancy the cancer had returned. He didn't expect to say it, but um, he was sorry that it was back again. So the first thing I said to him was, um, Now keep it, I have to talk through this or they're going to they're gonna say I stole it. So for commentary purposes, listen to this. This is her beating this. She's telling the story. She made it. I really got to go through this all over again. Well, transplants, even stem cell transplants. Uh, and we're treating those patients with just a single treatment. Did you hear that? Stem cells. All you people that said stem cell research didn't work. Listen. Even transplants, even stem cell transplants. Uh, and we're treating those patients with just a single treatment of T cells um, and eradicating uh, massive amounts of, of tumor in their body. I don't, I don't want to take any more out of there. They're going to not, not let me uh, post this video. But you get the point. Go look at it. It's here at sky.com. The technique involves removing immune cells from T cells from patients, tagging them with receptor molecules that target cancer and putting them back into the body in an infusion. The targeting molecules known as ceramic antigen receptors or CARs came specifically bred genetically engineered mice. Once attached to the T cells, they reduce the ability of the cancer to shield itself from the body's natural immune system. Do you understand what this has done? It could be what they call a potential paradigm shift, according to Washington, D.C. Professor Riddell. Much more work is, was required, he said, adding that it is not clear how long the symptom-free patients would remain in remission. That is important to also note. It could come back on you later, and God forbid it could come back worse. But almost all, 94%, went into complete remission. Being in remission is not the same as saying they are cured because the symptoms, can, again, can't return. But the medics are arguing caution, and Dr. Yvonne Doyle from the Public Health of England said it's an important breakthrough in that it's new technology that seems to develop. Well, I'll tell you what, people that have five months to live I have, if they don't mind, I say go ahead and definitely, definitely give them these treatments. And if they don't work, what have they got to lose? I mean, they're going to be dead in five months. <laughs>
absolute, excellent news. I'm going to stay with this for one moment, and I promise we'll get to the uh, more stuff. Daily Mail, new prostate cancer tests that smells the disease in urine could save lives, that's important, and spare men from invasive procedures, that is also important. Let me tell you why. When I met my first wife, I'm married now, I've been married twice. When I met my first wife, they talk, she talked me in to getting a procedure done where they test you for all diseases and she was going to do the same. Okay. They said that they wanted me to sign for a chlamydia test because it's part of the whole procedure. And they said, you know, do you want this procedure done? Some people have said it could be uncomfortable. And since you're not showing signs, you don't have to go blah, blah. I said, why not? You know, I was an idiot. So she produces a metal Q-tip with a cotton ball on the end. It's pretty much what it is. And proceeds to insert this into the top of Mr. Happy. <laughs> Needless to say, this was the single worst decision of my entire life. I urinated utter agony for two days. Of course, I, I didn't have anything. I've never had it. But absolute and total misery is what you do for love. Um, I asked the nurse afterwards, what in seven hells would you have done to me if I had to have it? I would have given you antibiotics. So if you think you have it, go, go to the crack dealer if you have to. But get yourself antibiotics. Do not ever let yourself get tested for chlamydia because i'm telling you it's like a, a trip to hell the story i just gave you that probably made every man now unsubscribe as they tune out that is nothing nothing compared to the misery where they do something like that all the way through your kidneys that some medical procedures do this could prevent that kind of misery for someone. Listen to this, because it could be someone whom you love. Scientists have created a urine test to diagnose prostate cancer, sparing men from the invasive investigations that they must currently undergo. That is to say, what must be pure and absolute hell May you, me, or anyone listening to my voice never, ever, ever, ever have to go through anything like this, even if you're listening to this and hate me. It's common. The researchers today hailed their work as an important milestone in fighting the disease and say that it should save many lives. Of course, more than 1.1 million cases were recorded globally in 2012. Um, 8% of all new cases and 15% of those affecting men, and that would be, uh, I guess that'd be men that already affected. How would it affect women? That was the stupid, yeah, because women get prostate cancer. Dumbest sentence I've ever read on air. I didn't write it. Essentially, the test uses a special tool to smell the cancer in a man's urine. The discovery published today in the, unless they mean all, all cancers. The discovery published today in the Journal of Breath Research, I didn't even know there was such a thing, it must have a subscribership of two, raises hope of tests that deliver an acute diagnosis from the onset. Mr. Raj Prasad, one of the two subscribers, I would guess, consult urologist at Southmead Hospital, North Bristol NHS Trust said, if this test succeeds, a full medical trial will revolutionize diagnostics. That is amazing news. Even with detailed biopsies, that is terrible, terrible things where they cut a small piece of you-know-what out to test it. There is a risk that we may fail to detect the prostate cancer in some cases. Currently, indicators such as large prostate and unusually high PSA levels can lead. Well, now, after that, you have to go through terrible tests. Maybe not anymore. The urine, the sniff test, as it were, uh, that who knows what the nose knows. 
very good news. In a trial run in collaboration with a team of the University of West England South Mead Hospital, 155 men who attended a urology clinic were assessed. Of this group, 58 were diagnosed with prostate cancer, 24 with bladder cancer, I see why they worded the women, and 73 with poor stream or urine flow without cancer. This involved inserting urine samples into the older reader where the they were then measured using algorithms developed by the research team at the University of Liverpool, UWE UWE Bristol. Professor Pierce Probert from the uh, University of Liverpool said there is an urgent need to identify these cancers. The earlier stage, of course, they're treatable. That is wonderful news. Absolutely God bless and wonderful news. And this is not wonderful news. High sugar diet is as damaging to your brain as extreme stress or abuse. And yes, that also means certain breads, it means alcohol, it means this sucks. But how many of you know someone like my wife? My wife cannot live without the sweetest, most absolute highest levels of sugar known to be systemic to the human body. She uses more sugar than a room full of heroin addicts with their diabetic girlfriends use needles. And this is what it does. It says there has been a systemic shift in the dietary landscape in recent years where once fat was the much maligned enemy, now scientists are turning their attention to sugar. And that is not just high fructose corn syrup. Many people are saying, well, it doesn't have a uh, high fructose corn syrup in it, so it's got to be better for me. Not necessarily. I mean, a little bit better for you than that. I mean, that, that's absolute brain poison there. But listen, not much better. It is now widely accepted that more must be done to encourage people to reduce their sugar intake. So much so that dietary guidelines in the UK and US have been altered to reflect the changing scientific evidence. The World Health Organization, that they're not particularly trustworthy, but some of the people in this report are, recommends no more than 10% of a person's daily energy should come from sugars or those found naturally in juices and honey. So that does include fruit juices. That means you need to drink things with no sweetness in it. How hard is it? Tea with no sugar. Vitamin water. No freaking sugar. No honey. No sugar. No apples. No oranges. No damn sugar. You should not get more than 50 grams, that is 12 teaspoons a day. Now, I'm over that, but I'm not like, I don't think terribly over it. I'm probably a mild diabetic risk, but the people around me terrify me. It says, while the links between high sugar and diet and obesity are well documented, in light of the mounting evidence, experts are turning their attention to other ways that sugar can attract, affect the body. In a recent study, a team of the, at the University of South Wales in Australia found sugar is as damaging to the brain as extreme stress or abuse. Where are the feminists? They're nowhere to be found. It is worse than your rape culture. I'm not making fun of rape victims. I am making fun of feminists. But when there, every time there is an extreme issue, the the people that rally the most when there isn't are never to be heard from. Here, research associate Jayanthia Maniaim and professor of pharmacology Margaret Morris discuss their findings. We all know that cola and lemonade that would be pop aren't great for your waistline or dental health. But our new study has shed light on just how much damage sugary drinks also do to your brain. It's making you an idiot is what it's doing. The changes we observe to the region of the brain that controls emotional behavior, in other words, makes you unbearable to be around, 
and cognitive function were more extensive than those caused by extreme early life stress. It is known that adverse experiences early in life, such as extreme stress due to abuse, increase the risk of poor mental health or psychiatric disorders. The number of traumatic events, accidents, witnessing of injury, bereavement, natural disasters, physical and sexual and emotional abuse, domestic violence, and being the victim of a crime, the child is absorbed in cortisol which is exactly what sugar brings into your brain. This is why I never have any energy. I'm always tired. I don't feel good. I'm mad. I'm whiny. Give me some more pop. This is where this comes from. Females are more likely to experience adverse events in life. They're also more worse at absorbing sugar. They found out with rats that were followed for 15 weeks old, their brains were examined, and this proved out to be absolutely true. The changes in the brain induced by sugar are of great concern, given the high consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages, particularly a high consumption among children. Well, I don't believe that to be true. If similar processes are at play in humans, then what we have found in the rat study, reducing the consumption of sugar across the board is of utmost importance. Importanto, do you understand? Sugar is poisoning you. They found that chronic consumption of sugar in rats who were not stressed produce similar changes to the hypocompus as seen in rats who were stressed but not having sugar. There you go, friends. There you go. And if you're already prone to being stressed, guess what sugar does for you? It makes it worse. So use the thinking part of your brain and cut it down. May I know my taste? Shut up and drink it anyway. Friends, if you're looking behind me, you see Tumblr, Tumblr, Tumblr. You know who's on Tumblr? Absolutely damn nobody. But if you are, follow us on Tumblr, The Correct Views, um, member of the media speaks. Also, look up Sticker Junkie, StickerJunkie.com, J-U-N-K-I-E. You'll get the best stickers that you've ever had made. You'll get it done at a fraction of the price that you expect it to pay. And if you use uh, it's Correct Views or The Correct Views, on checkout, you're going to get an extra savings just because you listen to the show. So leave me a comment. Let me know how you like Sticker Junkie. Biz Pack Review, BPR. Leaked government docs show what's really behind global warming agenda. Profound lifestyle changes. This is by Michael Abastish. We have talked about on here forever on how man-made global warming is a lie. There is no man-made global warming. It doesn't matter how much Bernie Sanders wants to tell you that there is. There isn't any man-made global warming. And proof after proof after proof has come out on this. It's all about one thing. Money. It's about taxing you, it's about controlling you, and we have more proof of it here, part of the Daily Caller News Foundation. Fighting global warming isn't just about deploying more green energy, it's also about imposing profound lifestyle changes, that's a direct quote, for millions of people, according to leaked European Union documents obtained by The Guardian, another source. It will require exploring possibilities for releasing negative emissions as well as profound lifestyle changes of current generations. That means making up for what they think other people done. And it was according to the document laid out by the European Commission's agenda. It was presented to the foreign ministers in Belgium on Monday. The potential scale of such deep transformation will require a wide social... So Societal debate in Europe, according to the document, which calls for a European-wide debate on how people need to change their day-to-day -day lives to fight global warming. 
For years, European regulators have been trying to fight global warming through a variety of schemes targeting people's energy consumption. From cap and trade to high energy taxes to green energy mandates, little has actually worked to drastically reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Needless to say, the planet has not warmed in 15 to 18 years. If you don't believe me, search it, but they don't want to tell you that because they can't tax you if you learn that. That's why I teach it to you. In recent years, environmentalists have been frustrated by Europe's cap and trade system. In 2013, carbon prices in the EU's cap and trade system hit rock bottom and it became economical to once again start burning coal. And environment, environmentalists were deemed the system worthless. Well, listen to this. CO2 intensity in the economy has come down. Environmental economist Richard Toll told a crowd gathered at the Libertarian Cato Institute last fall. But you can't really see a trend break in 1990. It just seems that the last 20 years were a continuation of trends from the 20 years before. And this is true for the United States, where there has been some climate policy, but it's also true for other countries, Germany, Japan, the United Kingdom, who have consistently claimed to be in climate policy and claimed to have done a whole lot to reduce their emissions. It's just not visible in the data. In other words, we're not warming it. We're having no effect at all. For years, UN has been pushing or are rich countries to cut red meat out of their diets because of methane emissions from cows farting, as it were, and the amount of water it takes to sustain livestock. Keeping meat consumptions at levels recommended by the health authorities would lower emissions and reduce heart disease, cancer, and other diseases. And of course, there are alternative sources of protein, which of course involves them wanting us to eat bugs. All of this, one as I just read you, there is no sign of any global warming at all. And countries that have done what they've been asked to do have seen no, no change either, because there is more proof that we are not warming the planet. And friends, that brings us to the dumb dees. There's more than one. More than one dumb dee. There are two dumb dees of the day today. And I'll tell you, no doubt about it, they have earned it in every possible way. Uh, Dick, good name for him. Dick Van Dyke endorses Bernie Sanders. He may be the last voice we ever hear. No, the last voice we ever hear would be the sound of the tax man pulling up to take what Bernie Sanders has said might be 90% of our income. Which is interesting, since this bonehead is 90 years old. Bernie Sanders thinks that we should vote for the socialists in America. you got to ask yourself, when you, walk, when you look at him, how the mighty have fallen. Listen to this. I think I, I want to say something. You know, in Bernie Sanders, I, I see a man saying that the emperor has no clothes. While everyone around him is saying they insist. They see clothes. In other words, Bernie Sanders, who wants to tax you to death, is the only sane person in Congress. You should give all of your money to the government because if you give them 90% of your taxes, 90% of your income to taxes, then they can give you insurance. You're not supposed to realize that if you were given 90% of your income, you'd be able to buy your own damn insurance. Whether or not the mission of the White House, I hope and pray that everyone hears the alarm is sounding now. Maybe the last words we ever hear. Thank you. What a miserable, miserable bit of news to report. And I like the man. I've always liked his acting, but I'm sorry he's way off here. I wish you health and happiness, my friend, but you're wrong and you win the dumb the other day. Along with From Truth Revolt, Trey Sanchez, this week in progressive lunacy, millennials can relate to ISIS. Now, I understand what Lady Gaga usher in the weekend do to the human brain. I know. I get it. Makes you an idiot. 
if you listen to hip hop, you have an average intelligence level of about 80 of an IQ. I get it, maybe 85. But you can't possibly be this dumb. And this is not me hating on the younger generation. Generation X is a bunch of sellout bastards, and I have no respect for them either. Just when you thought you'd heard it all, another video commentary by liberal media comes along and proves you have it. That you have it. Bad writing. Such is the case with the progressive outlet Mike, whose latest claim is that millennials and ISIS aren't really all that different. Now, again, I'm not sure how serious they were being here, but the number of people that don't get it saying that you could talk people into agreeing with anything. Listen to this. According to sources in Syria, ISIS is so broke that it can no longer afford energy drinks or Snickers bars for its fighters. That is true. They were, they were being paid partially in that, and they loved it. Gatorade and Snickers. They can't pay their bills. They're struggling with taxes. From a financial perspective, ISIS is relatable. If the taxes were hurting, millennials so much then we'd be talking about the possible election of rand paul because rand paul would do more to give you your tax money back than 57 donald trump's but that's not happening the youth has gone somehow from ron paul in four years to bernie sanders now fortunately they are letting him down in the same numbers they let ron down in so it's all good uh, but this is awful news so this is the progressive lunacy of the week from contributor Nicole Pasquale explain the similarities further. And this is a joke. She's replying to their stupidity. When you set aside all the global terrorism and kidnapping and flogging as millennials, we really are not all that different from ISIS. We started out convinced we'd take over the world, and when reality set in, we struggle with rent, the groceries, and utilities. We consider selling stuff to make extra cash. Taxes keep getting in the way, and despite all of this, we still boast about our lives on social media, but at least we still have our Snickers. So the W of the day goes out to Mike. Um, again, it says congratulations to Mike for finding common ground with a terror organization. Uh, making a joke about Snickers with a group that decapitates children, burns people in cages, and rapes women. Usually in comments at the time, this video is in very bad taste. Whether they were serious or not, you can see the dumbing down of the country in strides, leaps, and bounds. Friends, you're listening to The Correct View. Sam I B. D. G. and G. signing off. We'll be back with you probably Wednesday or Thursday. Um, hit subscribe. I've been posting. Everybody's been waking up in their coffee. Coffee's brewing. And guess what? You hit your phone. You hit your computer. Correct Views has your commentary. Media speaks as your commentary. How's it happen? Happens to me. So please donate if you can. The correct views at hotmail.com. Every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show. And make sure you write it all change of transportation. Let them know you heard about them on the correct views, and you're going to get a discount there as well. Good night, friends. God bless.